Depends on the of our hotel design, benchmarks, and what it is. Something that's really very important. So, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Uh, so, I will give the last talk, so I will try to talk as fast as possible. So, and, um, yeah, I started to count the word benchmark today during the day, and I stopped at like 23 or 24, and um, I found a lot of words like graph partition name, which also occur in my slides, so I give a sum up of, of today. And so the, the story behind my talk is, um, Recently, I read a white paper, um, which was more a kind of a success story um, and a collaboration of a database vendor and Zynga. So Zynga is a large online game um, corporation. Um, they are developing games for like Facebook, so they develop the Mafia Wars. Everyone knows that. And I read that, and. Um, what they were trying to do is, um, so they have users in their, in their game, and users can invite other people, and then they can get a kind of credit for that. And the whole problem sounded like, oh, that's a, a graph problem. And indeed, um, they started to look at graph databases. Um, they didn't name any of them, but I mean, there are not that many, so they probably looked at OrientDB, Neo4j, probably, and um, then they did some, I'm citing, benchmarking, and they tried to put those operations they wanted to support on top of the graph databases, and they found that they weren't just not fast enough. So, and um, any idea who the winner was, the database vendor? So the white paper was a collaboration of Zynga and the database vendor. Any idea who the winner was? No. Vertica. No. Vertica no. was. And, um, and then I, I started to, to read, and um, I found it quite interesting because they said they benchmarked all the graph databases, and it sounded like okay, we, we tried this and we tried that, and none of them was performing. And then I thought, okay, you can't really compare this and that when you just tried out. And so I thought it, it would be good to, um, to come together here and to find probably a, uh, a common way to define a proposal for a benchmark for graph databases. And um, so also the PC was very interested in that. And um, right now I'm just setting the scene and then afterwards we, we can discuss um, all the uh, problems I will mention during the talk. Okay, so this is my outline. So um, first I will just give a very brief motivation and then I will name a couple of challenges which I thought are probably the main difficult points why there is no graph database benchmark yet. And then um, I will add two points where I thought that they are part of my own opinion which we can discuss then later. And then I will sum up and then we can start to discuss. But if you have any questions during the talk, then just raise your hand and then we can start to discuss right away. Okay, so this is my, basically my no slide because it's blah blah motivation. I mean, we are all here because we like graph databases and graph processing somehow. And um, what I saw is that also larger companies are getting very interested in the social media analysis trend and um, but also other large companies um, like SAP are getting very interested in, in graph data processing. And the main issue is you, you can't, you know, so you want to just do a, a POC and you want to try something. Okay, and then you start Googling for graph databases and then you find Neo4j, you find OrientDB and you may find others and then you start to play with them. So they are all nice, some of them have advantages in that area and some of them are more suited in that area. And then, of course, performance is very critical, especially when you are working um, with very large graph data sets. And we've heard that today a couple of times, um, out of memory situations are 
not that nice. Um, and then, of course, you, you want to try it, and then you want to import your data, and then you want to start querying it. Uh, but the problem is, you always, when you try new graph database, then you write code, and then you start to um, to benchmark. But there's no common base um, where you can really say, okay, I can compare uh, vendor A with B with C. So something as for the relational work would be also very interesting um, for the graph database world. But um, a couple of questions. Um, what is actually, it? because a benchmark should, should usually represent typical operations. So what is a typical, typical graph operation? Is it a traversal? Okay, that, that's very typical. But others might think more in an algorithm perspective or in a pattern matching perspective. And so you, you cannot really say, okay, this is my benchmark and I defined a couple of algorithms and I want to benchmark uh, the graph database with those operations. So because then you really start to compare apples with, with orange. And also um, there is no SQL for graph databases, there's no XQuery for graph databases, so th there's no standard. So there we have seen Cypher, uh, which is the declarative query language for Neo4j, and then but you cannot use Cypher for OrientDB or any other vendor. Just come in. Um, and also uh, we have seen that uh, there are several types of graph data models. So some of them use uh, so-called hypergraphs, some of them use uh, property graphs, some of them don't allow labels on edges at all. Um, so there's not, not really a standard. Okay, so I identified four challenges, just four, uh, because I think they are actually much, much, much more, but uh, I would like to focus on where I think they are the most important ones. Um, the first one is the application domain. Um, in one of the earlier talks, um, I think it was uh, René, uh, where he transformed Wikipedia, and then he said, okay, this is my uh, social network. And then even there you can see um, graph data is not homogeneous. So depending on your application domain, um, your graph structure is following different patterns. So like for example, in social media, you have those communities um, where friends are hanging out together and then you have sparse areas and then you have other communities. And this, of course, this depends from application to application. Um, like for example, for recommendation systems, you might have a completely different graph pattern structure than for a social uh, media network. And there are other um, things like supply chain management and customer relationship management. And they are all very diverse. So, and this is not a, the first challenge we can then later discuss because maybe we, we are not able to define an application domain at all, which is so general purpose that we can say, okay, we base our, um, our benchmark on that application domain. Maybe we, we need to build up something which has most of the patterns which we find in all domains and we can combine all that together. Okay, um, so what graph data models do we know? So we have directed graphs, okay, so that is um, in first semester in, in your studies. Undirected, okay, it's just a more generalized way of a directed graph, and then you can mix it both up, and then you can have between nodes different edges. You can add properties to nodes and to, to vertices. You can also define more complex <coughs> attributes. Um, for example, you could group an, an address more kind of an of an object where you combine the the street, the zip code, and, and so on. And then we have hypergraphs. I'm sure you, you might know one or two more. 
but um, so there is no standard. And um, we, I think one of you guys said today so that the property graph is probably the most common and maybe also most suited one. Um, but this is also something you have to take into account when you define a benchmark. Because when you generate your data, then you have to know, okay, I want to be based on, um, like for example, the property graph model. Okay, so then the next problem is that we know very, very different ways to access graph data. So today we have seen um, a mixture of uh, yeah, kind of declarative and, and pattern matching. We could also have Sparkle in, in that way. Then we have Gremlin, which is kind of a little bit of everything. And so we, we cannot really distinguish how we want to access our data. So um, we've heard that Blueprints might be uh, well suited because it's a, a common API and um, already a couple of vendors support and they wrote a, a backend for Blueprints. So that might be a, a common approach to, ab to abstract from the type of, um, of how you query your, your graph data. Okay, just as a reminder, so first challenge, application domain, second challenge, uh, the, the data model, and the third challenge is how we are going to query our graph data. I wonder what is that? Yeah, I, I, I think that's that, that, version, that, that, that may be a good way to go, but I don't think it's, it's probably not necessary to find to have that abstraction in order to be able to do the benchmark. So what would you suggest instead um, that you could um, be able to define the results of a query, but then you give yeah. up the individual, you know, as you would from a particular database, you'd have to recode it. Okay, so then you, you put it on, on a yeah, higher yeah. level, and then you say, okay, I want to do this yeah, and that. So you have an abstract. But not, I mean, it, it, it makes it hard. I, I can see the benefit of having an abstraction that you can have exactly the same yeah. private code, uh, but it's not necessary. But then I think it's, it's always then, then hard to compare because then it's up to you how you implement what you describe in, just in plain words. But otherwise, you're depending on Tinkerbox implementation. Right, right. Because when when you when you base your benchmark on on blueprints, then you're always also measuring the back end to your database. And so that's kind of the, yeah. Any other questions? And then also, um, how are we going to define the, the workload for our benchmark? So as I mentioned earlier, uh, so what are typical uh, graph operations? Do we have traverses? Can we do just plain filters on, on nodes. So let's say I'm defining my um, the set of start nodes, and I only want to consider those nodes um, whose last name is Smith, like for example. Then if I'm just defining the start set, then this is just plain relational. I'm just doing a filter. And then on the other side, I have graph-based, really graph-based operations where I'm doing um, traversals and somehow I'm navigating in my graph. But I have both aspects, so I do have the, the filters where I'm selecting sets of nodes and on the other side I have pure graph operations and then typically both together. And um, and then this is also what, what I mentioned, um, should there be any algorithms included? like? shortest path algorithms, because that's de facto the, the standard algorithm, should they be included, because they are so commonly needed, or shouldn't they be included? Um, so it's always a question of where you have your granularity of operations. And then of course, uh, what about 
concurrent users. What about transactions? So see, I'm, I'm just summarizing everything what, what we've seen today. Um, and this is also something what you have to consider when, when you want to measure and what, what kind of figures do you have? Do you have transactions per second? Do you have operations per second? What is a transaction in, in the graph database context? Okay, so, um, so from my point of view, we, we have two problems. So one is, how can we generate graph data? So, and look at those three elephants. Oh, they, they, are, they are all elephants, but they look kind of different. <laughs> and just replace an elephant with a graph. So this is the social network elephant. This is the supply chain management elephant. And this is the whatever. <laughs> Pick whatever you like. And, um, but they have some things in, in common. Because we all know, OK, they are elephants. And it's basically the same with graphs. They all look kind of similar, but they have different um, properties. And um, I recently read a, a journal article uh, which was um, about graph mining. And for graph mining, it's also very important to, gener to generate graph data. And um, they tried to, to generalize what common patterns you should find um, across application domains. And this is what they came up with. Um, so typically, graphs are power distributed, power law distributed, uh, meaning that you have like <coughs> those called hub nodes, which have a lot of relationships to other nodes, and other nodes might only have one or two relationships. And then additionally, um, typically you have only a small diameter. So just by going like four, five, or six, or seven steps you can reach from each node any other node in your network. So there's um, one rule that each human knows each other human by six steps. Because if you, if you think about it, we are like seven billion people on Earth, and it just takes seven steps, and then you know each other. And uh, the third one, which I already mentioned, is the community effect. So usually your distribution of um, nodes and relationships is not random. Usually you have those communities. So this is what the authors are, are stating, that all graphs have at least these three uh, properties in common. OK, so this is what I already mentioned. Um, and so this is called a, a hop plot. And what happens here, um, you start at a certain node, and then you're just summing up um, the, the number of steps you, you have to go. And then you see here, all, you, you're summing up the number of vertexes you can reach. And then here, at some point, you will reach here the top. And then in this case, this was um, a small social media network. And um, at this point, you can reach any other node in your network within six hops. And then here also we, we have other examples. Um, so typically the diameter is not that large. Okay, and then the community effect. Um, and then you, you can come... Com um, calculate a coefficient, which is a measure how clumpy your, your communities are and how clumpy your overall graph data structure is. And so this is very typical for social networks. All right. So then, my thoughts on um, operations. Um, as you might have noticed, I'm not really a fan of integrating those um, complex algorithms in, into a benchmark. Uh, I would like to see more something like a base operations, and then you measure 
how many nodes can I insert per second or how many nodes can I update per second. And um, this is if you want to manipulate the, your graph structure or you want to add or update attributes. And, um, and then also here we have those two kinds of, of very operations. So on one side we have those filter operations which are um, actually only trying to get the attributes either of the nodes or of the edges. And on the other side, we have those graph-based operations, which are really um, trying to walk across paths in, in the graph. So, and what is a traversal? In the easiest case, it's just give me your neighbors. And then on top of that, you can still apply um, some kind of filters or you can um, test conditions. So like for example, only walk along that path if the attribute on that edge has weight rather than five or whatever. But basically it's just give me your neighbor and then apply a filter. So and then also um, you can imagine um, more kind of analytical operations on, on graph data. Um, I recently read a, a paper uh, which was called GraphQ, which added um, for just plain all up cubes, um, graph operations on, on top of that, where you can then um, do all those all up functionality also on the structure of the network, which was kind of, well, weird on one side, but interesting on the other side. And I think that there will be more like that in the future because um, I saw now a lot of talks about social network analysis and, and even IBM, they, they paid to, um, I think it was Twitter just to get data and then they're doing their kind of analysis and um, they're really making, making money out, out of that. So that was um, out of their analytics part and a lot of larger companies are jumping now on the train. Um, so I think there, there's really also a need for those more analytical operations. Just one question. Yeah. What do you mean by education? Node level? Um, so on, on edge level, it would be um, if I start at node A, and then I say, okay, I want to walk that far until I have a, a credit of zero. So like for example, I, I have, let's say I have 10 euro, and I want to walk as fast or as, as far as possible. Okay. Okay, and then uh, the second part are, are measures. So what are we going to measure? Is it just throughput, which would be very related to, to relational, which I think is in most cases okay, but we might be also interested in something like traverses per second, which are more um, graph data centric. Um, and also, what about distributed scenarios? We have seen today that um, it is very, very complicated to distribute a graph or even to, to run a, a graph query on, on several nodes. Um, and again, what about concurrent users? Uh, but actually, I think there could be much, much more uh, because I think just like query response time and throughput has nothing to do with, especially with graph databases. I mean, you could apply those measures to any database. There's nothing very graph data specific. But you, you still want to measure, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, that's the, the question. Is it sufficient just to use throughput? Uh, not necessarily. <coughs> okay. What's the answer? The answer? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what did you figure out? What do you mean? Is there a slide at the end to say, here's the answer, or is it, or are we, are we really No, it is questions? an open question. Okay. <laughs> 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 the other question. 
Now he wants to know how to answer the question and later, at last, have the, the answer. <laughs> Okay, so these were my thoughts on how we could define something to, to benchmark uh, graph databases. And um, what we've seen that it's not that easy as it might seem. And um, I would like to, to start at least the discussion on if we could find something or at least a base, how we could measure the performance of graph databases. And if you're interested in that, then just send me an email and then we can get in touch and uh, talk about it. Okay, so that's it from my side. Um, we can we can start the, the discussion right yeah. away. Okay. Okay. So, um, so what do the database vendors think about that? <laughs> you have a couple of them, so don't be shy. Although you are tired and Belgium beer is not good. Oh, I am quite happy to see um, benchmarks because uh, uh, people uh, have to know what is the best choice for a particular use case. So, we are not talking about uh, who is the big one, who is the stronger than another, but in what use case uh, uh, rocks uh, one product rather than another. Yeah. And uh, if there is room to, to improve uh, other products uh, to reach performance of other, other competitors. So, I'm very <coughs> happy to, uh, I'd like to participate and to contribute to be the only the benchmark. Okay. Yeah. I, I hope that, uh, because uh, in Interpop, uh, there was a, a GraphDB bench project yeah. that started from um, by Alex uh, uh, from maybe one one or two years ago. Uh, yeah, but it stopped. So uh, I'd like to see this project uh, uh, going on and uh, try to support it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think one of the interesting things I've seen lately is. Um, you know, I think it was 2011, 2010, uh, the DBpedia project released uh, three months of queries anonymized on their yeah. on their database, and there was a nice paper analyzing basically the how, how, how these queries look like. It was very interesting because at the time I was working on optimizing graph traversal on one path, and what happens on by looking at this data is that actually more than average all most of it, or basically all of them, don't go further than two, um, yeah. two steps far. So basically, it's uh, the, the queries look like, at least for Wikipedia, much different than we thought. Mm. So maybe one way of, of, of attacking the problem here is by looking at the queries. Right. right. It's basically what, what also other benchmark people are doing for as well. Yeah. Um, maybe that's, um, that's one way to go. So do, do you guys see some typical patterns in your queries, or is it very widespread? Um, difficult to say. I, I, I'd love to. I mean, I think we all need to do more. It's great for us when we can do analysis of what people really do on the database, and we're not generally we're not in the loop when we're yeah. using our, you know, using the software because it takes money to sell, so we don't see all those queries. Um, but. Yeah, doing that kind of analysis I think is really fantastically useful because there's all sorts of things I'm sure people are doing that we never expected them to do um, that we could radically improve performance if we uh, if we did that. So um, yeah, I think I think doing I think yeah. the, uh, uh, analyzing how people are really using it and and also like that the thing about particular situations yeah. um, being able to recognise a particular pattern of usage would be really helpful to, to everyone, I think, to, to people choosing a database and also for some graph processing uh, method, uh, but also to people making, making uh, with the underlying software to know how to, um, how, how to perform better in those situations, I think would be really helpful. Um, I, 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 looked at, I, mean, I was just, I was uh, just going to uh, Alex a few, a few slides ago. Um, one thing that struck, I think, and particularly, but um, when you're talking about like 
operations on like number of edges or nodes inserted, that kind of that kind of thing. Yeah. I think those are really important. Those are that those are really important areas where we want to be like we all want to be super fast doing those things. But from a benchmarking point of view, I don't think it's so useful to have those things um, as the only thing that you report on. Um, the reason being that as a as a as a um, as someone choosing a product or, or trying to design a system, uh, it's most helpful to have a benchmark that has units that you can relate to in your own application. Mm. So suppose I'm coming to a new application and I I haven't even designed it yet, but I know that uh, this server is going to be able to do you know x million nodes per second. I'm like, well, I don't know how many nodes I'm going to have, so how am I going to answer? How am I going to know? How good it is, all I can say is this one's faster than this. But I don't know, I can't use it for sizing hardware or anything like that. Um, I mean, it's similar to, you know, like a doing a, having those uh, good old uh, transactions per second benchmarks that we used to get on the relational world. And it's like, well, before I've designed my application, I've no idea how many transactions per second I'm going to do. And I, I, you know, I need it to be a risk of hardware or all those things. Um, so I think as well as the raw um, primitive uh, measurements. I think it's really helpful to have things that are defined in a um, like an application relevant um, domain. So, like a lot of the examples here are from like a social networking space. And I was saying, if you, uh, I would I would suggest that if, if you're having a, a benchmark in that space, you would actually define it as this is how the application, the, my pretend application works. You've got friends, you've got uh, status updates, you've got friendships. Um, this many people are going to update like this, the connection profile has this distribution, all, all those kind of factors, uh, rather than the individual nodes that will underlie that. Because if you define the benchmark in the kind of business terms, then you can actually have different, like you've got even more power because Maybe you know uh, one database has got this amazing feature that you can express that stuff even better. I mean, like taking Perit stuff with having a different, he's got a different graph structure there. It'd be great to have a benchmark where you say, well, as well as the the tool of the need, it's also I can design my application in a better way to get a better, uh, you know, a better algorithm suiting that suiting that application. Okay. Um, so I, 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 I like the I like the two of them together. You know, two different types of benchmark mm. that give me, you know, a technical number and also like a business meaningful number as well. I, I think that the, the matter it's of a scale. Okay. Yeah. Well, one of the first cases where a benchmark that really shows the things like they are really are are with GPGP. Okay. I I was attending some the initial conferences that say, okay, it's time to use CUDA, it's very cool. But the the hook is, okay, CUDA is 30, 100 times faster. So why the benchmark must be relevant? Because the benchmark will say, no, no, if you do this with a graph database, you will be 30, 100, 1,000 times faster. And I think that a benchmark must prove it. But there is a problem. Everything has a trade-off. Okay, so you also have to show, okay, if you use this kind of stuff, but because this kind of stuff is where you really going to speed up your application, you have to know that these other operations will go slower. But because the, the trade-off is, is mandatory. If you win speed in some place, you will lose another one. Because if you win speed in everywhere, why you are using the old tool? Well, it has no sense. So you, you need all the information for this reason some things like the simple one always the cost to adding one element removing one one transaction okay no I, I have to measure one transaction well okay how many transactions you can do per second you have an hour system running more or less you can say I have a thousand but you don't you don't can say I don't know if I have uh, one million transactions per second or I have one thousand okay the scale you know which is the scale you know how many connections will happen in one machine? And it's the scale, but you know. No, not exactly that number. And I think that the people is what what they want to know. Okay, if I put this here, I will want some performance, respect a LDDM, and relational database. If not, 
or if not much, it works to me to have a specialized client program that there is to make the queries because I, I can shoot a stone and find a, a tens of people that write a square, more of, more of good or, or worse, mm -hmm. but, but they can do it. So I, I think that the, the point is, is this. No, it's not just write a, a benchmark for everything or for each operation, or the same benchmark that for SQL is. Which kind of applications? You know that a graph database will make the difference and and just choose to show that this application is running is really go going fast. Actually, and meeting also. <laughs> just again, yeah. um, I think there's still a big lack of maybe it's because I like it itself of gra graph theory, of graph structures, graph algorithms that have been shown that are very difficult. I think that you try to make for about application. But if you strip off all the semantics of your data behind, you have a graph. You have a graph, and there is, from earlier, there have been studies about uh, if you have a lot of cycles, if you don't have cycles, if you have a lot of nodes that are limited degree, minimal degree. There is a lot of things that are done, and uh, if you in the challenge number one, mm -hmm. you've been trying to make things like bottom up. You say I have a lot of applications different with different graphs, and let's try to find a common structure. Yeah. I think that in my, my talk, I've talked about the semi-structured data. We mean when you're talking about graph, we're not talking about structure. You don't define it. If you want to add a relationship, you just add an edge to your graph. And maybe I think that it, it, there's a lack of graph structure behind all that. So we're talking about benchmark. Is the fact that mm, according to your algorithms, according to the data, graph benchmarks will be aided by something, and you have to choose. What kind of things? Uh, what I want to talk about? I don't. I don't. I seriously don't believe that you'll be able to say, uh, "Let's create some kind of common model of graph," and then, uh, a, a, in abstract level, a common type of request. And let's. I think that if you do it, it will be so. The, the semantics will be so low that it will be. It won't speak for anything. I think. I don't. I don't believe that if you. If you try to do the same things in all cases, it will be very little significance if you have to maybe try to do difficult things that maybe the database will maybe have happened to, to do. Maybe they won't, but I don't think that doing like, uh, for instance, shortest path, I mean, it's, it's polynomial time, so it's, it's just a question of number of accesses and uh, how, s how fast the, da the graph database uh, computes the neighborhood. So, mm. I mean, then you're going back to internals, but I mean, the result is not very relevant. I mean, the, um, maybe you should maybe try to start doing what's a difficult query, like finding every, any, find me all the persons on Facebook that have exactly 17 friends, for instance. I mean. But I that's not very difficult, huh? Try to do it. <laughs> Seriously, that have only 17 friends and not, and, and, uh, no. No, maybe not, no, no, but people that have 17 friends are friends with the other 16 and no friends with the other. Okay. That's, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's, I don't, f I don't think they can do it. I think, I think the problem is of the mathematical nature, because in order to compare, uh, a network that's based, that's growing in a stochastical way in order to measure the same problem, you would have to go back to the nature of the problem. So you cannot have a universal benchmark because it's, it's like evolution. You have to understand how a graph evolves in the process of transforming it before you do that. So it's not possible to have a universal solution and that goes back to the limitation of of how the relation of math can grow. So I think you can only make case specific for very limited problems, which in the end would, would exclude making a universal statement or a way to compare things. So I think it's oversimplifying in a way. In fact, it, it happens the same way with SQL. Uh, one of the benchmarks that there exists is XMath. I don't know if anyone knows it. Anyone have listened about XMAP? 
okay, it's it's a, a squirrel benchmark that all DV, rational DVDMs for databases and games are tuned to have a very good resource, and it's basically to help to decide what engine to, to, you will buy for a, for a website. And it's produced in an array. It's just a bit of array with an artificial data is generated with the same size, and you can compare. And it's one specific, and it, and it is for SQL, a very known example with 30 years of development, and that, that's the point. It's, it's, it's just for one use. And the other one you have talked about uh, synthetic data. In, in the terms of, of graphs, for me, the synthetic data is very, very, very dangerous, because if you are tracing, sometimes you don't have exactly the same. Mm. For example, I discovered with with movie length. Uh, if you have a small small data sets of movie length that are get, get ready to you, okay, there's no problem. Yeah. But when you get the latch or in the other words, the walls, you, you can see that it appears on the structure that destroys all your benchmarks and all your performance that you have <coughs> for. Yeah, because it's reality, that's what real happens. And the reality always... Uh, <coughs> yeah, but I mean, that, that's more a, a general problem for, for yeah. benchmarks. Yeah. And I mean, maybe for, for graph data, it's even more dangerous for, than for relational data. Yeah. Did you see a paper that called a discussion on dating and graph data, on the dating of graph data benchmark yeah. coming from the gamma, gamma user group in Barcelona? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. the, the what you are saying. Right, so there, there's a big overlap between those two. Yeah, but I mean, do you agree? Do you have an opinion? Do you think it's interesting what they say? I mean. um, well, for them, they, they were also trying to build like a universal solution. Yeah. And they, they found um, that the social network is a, a good representative for all domains. Uh, that's why they, they built everything on, on top of social network uh, queries and also social network data. Um, yeah, well, that, that's more kind of, uh, I just pick one domain and then put everything on top of that. Okay. So, we have time for one more question and...